body bags were whore lies. Now take my bitch. She won't complain about shit cause she's my hoe. She don't belong to a trick, so when you fuck her and give her all your cash, I get paid. I put my foot in her ass, I won't marry the bitch. And give her half, I get mohead. And then I laugh at that one bitch shit. I got a gang of hoes, I get freak ass lick these balls and toes. Now stupid little bitches get tossed. If they don't realize that I'm the motherfucking boss. Come on down and get your ass pinched. And if you talk shit, get your ass lynched. Cause I'm the B, the I, the T, the C, the H, the K, the I, the L, the L, the A, Sean B. A boy that's bigger. In a nut, cause a bitch is a bitch, is a hoe, is a slut. You say, how can I call a woman a bitch? It ain't nothing but a word like shit. Ain't no slipping in my motherfucking pimpin'. And I'll be Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to week 82 here on Body Bags. I am your host, Mood616, and thank you once again for dropping in, guys. Alrighty, yeah, week 82 is here. And it is Camp Motion Pictures Week. Uh, I believe Steve actually chose this one. Um, unfortunately, Steve is on a hiatus right now. Um, I don't know if you if you'll actually be coming back to Body Bags, but in the meantime, uh, if you guys checked out last night's review by Outsider Three Six Five, awesome stuff with the video violence review. He's going to be the Saturday guy, so definitely be checking out his videos. Alrighty, so yeah, Camp Motion Picture Week, one of my favorite low budget companies. You know, they're really known for releasing a lot of um, shot on video, Super Eight type films. And you know what you're going to get with that, you know, Cannibal Campo, Video Violence 1 and 2, Woodchipper Massacre, things like that. Um, I decided to go with this one today because I actually haven't watched this anthology film since I first got this box set. It's actually from this big box and it's called The Basement. Now, this right here is actually was actually a lost Super 8 film uh, from 1989 that they found, put back together, and uh, released it in this box set, which also contains... Cap, uh, captives, which W Doubles actually reviewed earlier this week. Video Violence 1 and 2 and Cannibal Campout, which of course I've got the other three on uh, solo disc too. But but yeah, The Basement from 1989. Very, very interesting anthology film. Um, and yeah, so we'll get into the, uh, the premise of it. Basically starts out where four people are actually summoned to this basement by basically kind of like a, a devil type demon character by the name of The Sentinel. Now these four people are basically summoned to this basement and they have and they're forced to witness future crimes and things and bad deeds that they're you know they're about to commit and uh, yeah and then who knows maybe they'll meet their meet meet, meet their maker uh, but yeah so there's four stories in this anthology film the first one is called the swimming pool it's basically about a woman that uses her swimming pool there's some type of demon entity weird thing inside the swimming pool and she basically lures people into the backyard and ultimately throw them in, throws them into the pool, killing them off one by one. Uh, probably one of, probably my least favorite story out of the four. Uh, it's obviously really low budget, super eight shot. Um, but you know, there's really not a lot to it. It's just kind of one location. It's very simple. You know, there's really no gore, blood and guts. You do get to see a little bit of the creature that comes out of the, out of the pool. It's basically just kind of like this huge tentacle type deal. Um, so that one's, you know, it's okay. It's all right. And then you got the second one, which is called Trick or Treat. It's basically about a guy that he's kind of like the Scrooge of Halloween. He hates Halloween with a passion. Ironically enough, he's a teacher and he has to deal with kids on a daily basis. And he really does not like kids. Uh, he even has visions of fucking with them on Halloween. Uh, and you know, there's actually a scene in this too, where <laughs> he actually goes through his classroom killing off every one of the students and it's just basically <laughs> pretty actually gory and pretty nasty something you really couldn't get away with nowadays because that's kind of a touchy subject with you know death in schools and stuff um but you know ultimately you know he starts fucking with these kids on halloween and some bad shit happens to him so that one's actually really cool it got some pretty uh, pretty interesting gore going on and it keeps you pretty interested. I like the whole Halloween theme to it. There's a lot of different locations in that one too, so pretty interesting. Uh, then we got a third one called Zombie Movie and it's basically about a fucking asshole director who just thinks he's the best. He's like, he even has a line like, fuck George A. Romero in the film. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, he's an asshole director and he just wants to do things his own way. And he's making a zombie film, of course, and ultimately these zombies and, and ghouls and goblins and shit like that ultimately come to, you know, 
and start wreaking havoc on his movie set for real. So you got that one. It's got some pretty interesting gore in that one also. Um, I do like the effects. Uh, you know, it was actually it's kind of fun. The, 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 the director in this episode is such a fucking asshole. It just had me cracking up throughout the whole episode, but throughout the whole short. Pretty funny stuff. Uh, and then we got Home Sweet Home, which is basically about a guy that decides to buy this house knowing what had actually happened inside this house. Like apparently six or ten years earlier or something like that. Uh, there was a guy that was basically abducting people, uh, molesting them, and you know, killing them, uh, dismembering their bodies, and they never really found the killer. Now he decides to buy this house because it's obviously really fucking cheap, and uh, some crazy shit starts going down in the house. He starts kind of questioning his own sanity, and yeah. Um, in this one, really, really awesome gore. Actually, the gore effects are fucking outstanding in this one. It's really quite surprising. Now, the biggest downfall to this short is the simple fact that it's obviously shot on Super 8, but it's a little dark. It's a little dark. I wish they had, a, uh, you know, used a little more lighting for those scenes. Um, but it's definitely not too dark that you can't see what's going on. So, you know, it's not overly that bad. I just wish it had a little more lighting to kind of showcase some of those fucking gore effects that they had in that one, because it's definitely the goriest one, and probably my second favorite one. Um, if I had to rank the shorts in here, I'd definitely go with Trick or Tree was my favorite one. Uh, home Sweet Home, then Zombie Movie, then Swimming Pool. Um, and of course, the the um, the wraparound story comes, you know, full force. There's, you know, there's parts of the wraparound story in between each segment and stuff, and it does have a full circle wraparound story, which is okay, you know, but at least there is a wraparound story, which is kind of exciting, because, you know, I really don't like watching anthology films that are just, like, shorts, and they're they're just put together. There's no, you know, kind of wraparound story, no correlation. So, but yeah, overall, this one's actually pretty entertaining. It only runs about 70 minutes. So the shorts are really short. They're, they're about 15 minutes a piece. Uh, I guess probably the, the perfect length really for something like Swimming Pool. I would have liked to have seen Trick or Treat as like a full length film. I think you could really do a lot with that. Pretty fun stuff. Um, but yeah, overall, really enjoyable. If you like Super 8 or even like shot on video type films, uh, I really like, uh, I love the sound quality of Super 8 fil films. I mean, like, the ADR is a little bit off in this, you know, because I think that's just the way it always works with, with uh, Super 8 films for some weird reason. Um, but it's not to the point where it's, like, very, you know, overly distracting or anything like that. It's very enjoyable. You know, basically, I, I didn't really, I didn't dislike any of the shorts on here, so, you know, it is what it is. Acting is what you're going to get. It's actually not so bad throughout the whole, all the shorts. There's really not a lot of bad acting, like terrible, terrible acting. It's not great either. But uh, I think, I think the director did a really good job with this, you know, four totally different type of shorts, not so bad effects. Uh, like I said, there was a little bit of lighting issues here and there. Editing wasn't so bad. Um, so the technical aspects of this film for being a lost film is actually quite impressive, I have to say. Um, but yeah, uh, the Basement. Definitely give this one a shot. Um, I, I don't even know if you can buy this disc like just solo like this, or if you have to get it in this big box, uh, which also comes with the VHS, of course, which is red, which is really interesting. Um, but yeah, cool stuff. If I had to rate The Basement, I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. Um, definitely for people that love Super 8 shot on video stuff, you'll really enjoy this one. I think it's a, a, you know, a fucking fun time. I like some of the ghouls and demon looks and stuff in this. Pretty cool stuff, but... But yeah, check it out guys, The Basement, and that's going to do it for week 82 here on Body Bags. Of course, we'll be back next week with week 83, and I'll check you then. Peace out, homies.